Hello, it's Robert here. How are you? Thank you for being able to speak to me. That's all right. I forgot which congregation I, I rang. I was on JW.org, find a meeting. Yeah, you rang Layston. <laughs> Layston. Are you nearby or far away? <laughs> um, no, I don't. Where is Layston? L-A-Y-S-T-O-N? L-E-I-S-T-O-N. It's on the East Coast near Lowestoft. E that's right, yes. East, East Anglia. Um, no, yeah. no, I'm some way to the west of you, um, okay. but sometimes it is difficult. I've contacted Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Halls and I've just left messages and I haven't had a reply. Well, the thing is that with COVID, we haven't been meeting down the hall. Often mm. there's a phone and a, an answer machine sometimes at the Kingdom Hall, yes. but we haven't been there for two and a half years. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, well, what puzzles me is chapter 13 of your book, Enjoy Life Forever. It's, um, it's paragraph two. Do you want me to read it? Um, it's okay, I can find it, but yes, I'll continue. It's on page 55, thank you. It's um, lesson 13, paragraph two. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him. It does seem to be a little harsh in condemning religions that have any involvement at all in warfare? It's interesting when you consider both the history and modern history of religion mm -hmm. as to the things that it uh, gets involved in. Uh, many would say that it was the uh, uh, supporter or even promoter of wars when you look at history. But of course, we recognize that many individuals who are religious are very caring, helping, um, charitable individuals. So it's mm -hmm. not talking about individuals, it's talking about religions as a whole and the terrible things that they have in fact uh, caused to happen. I see. So it's the religious institutions that are... Um, well, I mean, one of your awakes calls... That, that would be a better way of putting it than the long-winded way I just did. <laughs> OK. Um, I, I've got an awake here which basically says that. It calls the religious institutions pawns of Satan the devil. Um, uh -huh. It's the awake for the 22nd of the 4th, that's April, uh, 1993, page 6. Rather than encourage love for one's brother... The churches have supported and even promoted the killing of one's brother in war. Thus they have become pawns of Satan the devil, just as surely as were the religions of the ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians and Romans. So it does seem to condemn any religious institution that fights in warfare or even supports war in any way as pawns of Satan the devil. I mean, have, have I understood that right? Yes. But in the First World War, in the pages of the Watchtower, even the Watchtower itself, in the Watchtower magazine of the 18th of April, no, eight, um, sorry, let me start again, 15th of May, 1918, Watchtower, supported the American military in the First World War by encouraging its readers to buy Liberty Bonds, also known as Liberty Loans. That was money you loaned the American government interest-free to support the American war effort. That's the 15th of May, 1918, page 6,257 of the Green Reprints. You know, why is the Watchtower... Page 6,000. <laughs> Pardon? Page 6,000. 6,257. The wow. Watchtowers were reprinted in 1920. They're called the Green Reprints. They were reprinted in seven huge volumes in 1920. So it seems that you have done lots of research on this mm -hmm. and therefore it's probably not the first time that you've uh, engaged in this issue. So I wonder if your questions are therefore really genuine. 
Well, yes, they are genuine. I, I haven't had answers from Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, um, they just tell me to go to jw.org and do some more research, or they hang up on me. Um, well, but... I wouldn't be rude to hang up on you. Um, the first point is quite valid. There's lots of information there that can be researched. And obviously, you're very good at uh, researching information. Um, how do you... How do you... Going back to what may have happened in 1918, it uh, doesn't really uh, impress me very much, I'm afraid. It seems as I can't check on it myself at the present moment. Well, you can always write to the head office. They would have the watchtowers. They would be able to send you photocopies to see if these, yeah. to see if what I have told you is is accurate and true. I mean, Rutherford even took part in a national day of prayer in America. He knew he was about to be arrested and go on trial. So he deliberately took part in a national day of prayer. Unfortunately, we do not have photographs of this event. But he prayed with Catholic priests and with Protestant clergymen on a raised platform for victory in the First World War. He was one, and one of another. He was one of a number of religious leaders doing this. Doesn't that make the Watchtower, just like all the other religions, exactly the same? If you want to draw that conclusion, of course, you're free to do so. Today... The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York gets shared dividends from arms companies from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. Henrietta M. Riley was a woman who died in 1945. She bequeathed all her assets be turned into shares. The shares are called the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. It's administered by a Detroit bank. I think they're called the Commercia Bank of Detroit. They run it for a fee, a quite a large fee, obviously and they produce the annual accounts for the IRS tax authorities to get tax exemption. And all the share dividends goes to one sole beneficiary, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, uh, who have been receiving money from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust since 1945. Now, some of the share dividends are in arms companies, such as Northrop Grumman, Honeywell and Boeing. Northrop Grumman makes the B-2 bomber, um, the Henrietta N. Riley Trust also has share investments in a company that makes soft pornography called Lionsgate Entertainment. Now, the Watchtower know this and they accept the money. I mean, aren't they just another money-making religion that's, that's all about money and they simply use the Bible and they use the word Jehovah to get people to be obedient to them so they can make more and more money? I mean, aren't they just the same as the Catholics and the extreme Pentecostals and the Mormons? And the Seventh-day Adventists, the Jehovah's Witness religion is just the same as all of these. The bottom line is, we want money. If that's what you want to believe, fair enough. I have heard this before. And it's either someone who used to be a witness and has a gripe, or it's someone who just wants to waste my time, which is why I can understand people hang up on you. I don't want to be rude and do that. If you have genuine questions, I will spend as long as I want discussing it because I find it interesting but I know you're now you're not out for that all right I tell so, you what you know thank you for your thoughts I, I was, thank you for your I was about to go to chapter 15 on the resurrection no I won't now but you said you're interested you've, you've I've, I've, made your point and you've made out why you really want to contact me and Ch it's not a genuine interest. Chapter 15 is about Jesus being resurrected as a spirit. I have a genuine interest. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Your book on page 63, that's um, lesson 15, paragraph 3, it says, After Jesus' life as a human ended, he was resurrected as a spirit, and he returned to heaven. Yeah. There's no verse in the Bible that says Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. Did you check the one that I asked you to do so? First Peter chapter 3.18, I'll read it to you. It says he's resurrected by the Spirit in my New King James Bible. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say Jesus was raised as a spirit. Your Bible, the New World Translation, follows a lot of the modern Bibles that reads, he's made alive in spirit. 
But there's no Bible, including your New World Translation, that says he's raised as a spirit. You're just reading that into the text when the text does not say that. Most modern Bibles read in flesh and in spirit because both, both, both of those statements are in the dative, which is a, a movement in, in Greek. Um, my, my New King James says slightly differently, he's made alive by the spirit. But no Bible in English that I've ever come across says Jesus was made alive as a spirit. So, you know, this is a... It doesn't say as, it says in. Yes, in does not mean as. There is no Bible that says Christ was made alive as a spirit. You're taking the word in and you're reading into that something that the text doesn't say. The text does not say Christ was made alive as a spirit. It's the contrast between in flesh and in spirit in many modern Bibles. But a few Bibles, about six of them, including the King James and the New King James, which I'm reading from, say he's put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit. Other than this verse, which is a bit lot, you know, could you show me a verse in the Bible where it says clearly that Christ was raised as a spirit or at his resurrection, Christ became a spirit? Well, it's logical, really, isn't it? Because as it shows in Corinthians, flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. He couldn't go to heaven as a physical man. It doesn't say heaven. It says the kingdom of God in 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Let, let me do something you're not doing. Let me read the text and also read the whole of the text because you've missed out nor does corruption inherit incorruption, which gives the context. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. When it says corruption, it's talking about the unredeemed the fallen, unredeemed people who haven't found salvation. It's not saying that Christ is part of this corruption and therefore Christ can't go to heaven as a man. It's, it's, it's not saying that. I think what you're doing again is you're reading something in the text that you want to read, but what the text doesn't say. So an easy way of understanding 1 Corinthians 15.50 is think of Adolf Hitler. When he died, he died hating Christ, hating the gospel. OK, he died in his sins. He died as a fallen, unredeemed man. Well, what does 1 Corinthians 15, 50 say about people like him? It says that people like him who are corrupt cannot inherit incorruption. In other words, they can't. Hitler can't inherit the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is for people who love Christ, who are in the new covenant. It's not for people who hate Christ and hate the gospel and are enemies of Jehovah God. Let me read it again. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So the context is the kingdom of God. Who's not going to inherit the kingdom of God? Nor does corruption, that means fallen, unredeemed flesh, inherit incorruption. And incorruption means the kingdom of God. It's not about going to heaven. It's about the kingdom of God that only people who've been redeemed are going to are going to be a part of God's kingdom. Do you have any response? Uh, no, not really. I don't want to hang up on you, but I don't want to continue the conversation either because I know what you're trying to do. I've had it before. So please be friendly and just end the call so I don't have to. Why Why does the Watchtower, no, no, admittedly no many years wise. ago, teach no, that no Lucifer is a god? No more points, no more reading. Lies? Script, you know. Excuse me, I want to read, I want to quote from the book Children by Judge Rutherford, published I think in 1941, and on page 55, Rutherford says two things about Lucifer, which is the name for Satan before his fall. He says that Satan oversaw the creation of the earth, so I thought Father, Son and Holy Spirit were the creator of the universe. But according to Rutherford, uh, this earth was created by Father, Son, Holy Spirit and Lucifer, who's a co-creator with um, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And Rutherford also calls Lucifer a god. Now, the idea that Lucifer is a god and he's he's hung up. But um, the idea that Lucifer is a god is not a Christian uh, belief. 
it comes from um, the occult and it comes from very high level Freemasonry. You don't get to the 33rd level, 33rd degree of Freemasonry uh, from the 32nd degree until you realize that um, Lucifer is God. <laughs>